Well, um, it has been an unprecedented year. Crazy. I'm, with all the, the... The stuff? Yeah. It's unprecedented how many times we've actually heard the word unprecedented. <laughs> Our dream vacation was canceled. You got to keep the job you don't like. You know they can see you? But let me tell you all the no's, friends. Um, no going to restaurants, no movie theaters, no movie theater popcorn, no state parks, no going to athletic events, no church services, and no... Don't say it. Don't. Hey, kids! You've got to be more careful with the toilet paper! This is all we have! All the drive-by birthday parties, graduations, <laughs> baby showers. I will say this, I thought it was a little awkward throwing out that baby shower gift in the front yard. You weren't supposed to do that. It just feels like a wasted year. There, I said it, I said it. Yeah, there's, there's just all the time at home. <laughs> Boom! And all the time that we were made to spend together. Hey, honey! Honey! Leave me alone! All the heart-to-hearts. Mm. Goodness. Speaking of hearts, our son, Jason, right over there, said yes to Jesus. Right at that kitchen table. July 17th, 2020. You know, I guess it's not really wasted time because God didn't waste a moment of it. I think I have the answer to what I'm thankful for. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? Everything. Everything. be 
be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more pardon over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, yeah. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Thank you for worshiping with us today. In Isaiah 56, 1, God's message, guard my common good. Do what's right and do it in the right way. When Jesus taught people to love their neighbors as themselves in Mark 12, 30 through 31, and treat others as they would be treated in Matthew 7, 12, he was teaching people to seek the common good. And the common good teaches us to seek what's best for everyone, beginning with the last, the least, the lost, the most vulnerable, and the most forgotten. The current world spike in the cases of COVID-19 has emphasized the need to wear a mask, practice social distancing, and wash hands and surfaces frequently for the common good. Experts tell us that these following these guidelines will help prevent the spread of the coronavirus and save lives. We praise our doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers and pray for their safety. Over 1,700 healthcare workers have died treating the victims of the coronavirus. Please wear a mask and help reduce the spread of this terrible virus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 tells us to praise God for his protection and pray for God's healing, grace, comfort, and wisdom. We praise those that protect and serve us, firefighters, police officers, those in the military and emergency personnel. We lift praises for our frontline workers, custodial workers, and truck drivers, and know that God grants each of us gifts of skills to benefit one another. We pray for those endangered by earthquakes, fires, and other natural disasters. Hurricane Etta has caused catastrophic flooding with loss of life and destruction in its path. Please keep all of those affected in your prayers. We lift prayers for our children, teachers, support staff, and administrators as, and parents as schools continue in building and virtual instruction during this pandemic. Please keep all of your school systems and colleges in your prayers. We pray for the end of senseless violence triggered by hate and that the hate would be replaced by love and respect. As we continue through our senatorial runoff election, we praise our election officials for complying with their oath to make a true and perfect return. We pray for a smooth hand ballot count this week. We pray that our fellow Americans will participate in the peaceful transition of power in our presidential election. We pray for wisdom for our world, national, state, and local leaders. We praise God as he continues to guide our research scientists as they conduct the final testing of a vaccine and as they develop improved treatment for COVID-19. We praise volunteers who are participating in the coronavirus vaccine trials and pray that no vaccine will be released until it has completed all testing requirements. We give praises to God for the ability to worship in our homes 
and in our drive-in worship and as we plan to return to our sanctuary. We praise God for the blessings of healing, good reports, and continued health improvements for our neighbors and loved ones. We pray for healing and comfort for Danelle Moore, Karen Ford, and Sheila Larson. We lift prayers that Julie Helgren's liver transplant surgery was successful and that she will recover completely. We pray for those undergoing treatment for illnesses, including Peggy Phillips, Wanda Reagan, David White, Shelley Weir, Heather Torres, Bree Crawwell, Janelle Moore, and Little Finn Lamonds. We lift praises and prayers for our loved ones and neighbors with health needs, including Margie Crowley, Cassie Niles, Jessica Bland, Alton Phillips, Cheryl Brett, Joey Brett, Betty Rogers, Paul Papour, Roberta Ryan, Candy Rogers, Kara Schaefer, Dean Carter, Lawrence Beasley, Reza Cater, Joyce King, Velma Schultz, Dolores Marchant, Kim Rooney, Don Webb, Bertie Parrott, Raleigh Parrott, Debbie Downs, Jackie Sauter, Danielle Ritchie, Laurie Smith, Jean Hamans, Alan Proman, and all those suffering from cancer and all those suffering from the coronavirus. We pray for the homebound, including Miss Jackie Eaton, Miss Margaret Beasley, and Mr. Coleman Sharp. We pray for that those who mourn the loss of loved ones will feel comfort and peace. We lift up those with unspoken prayers, and we know our Father knows the need. I pray that something will touch your heart today and, and make you sigh. I pray that something will touch your funny bone and make you laugh out loud and touch your soul and make you thank God. Have a blessed day.
moments. I want to ask you a question this morning. How many of you like to eat cake or cupcakes? I thought so. I bet every one of you enjoy cupcakes and cakes. Well, I love to make cakes. I'm a baker and I love to bake anything sweet, but especially cakes and cupcakes. So why do you love cupcakes and cake? Well, probably because they taste really yummy, right? Yes, they're sweet and they taste very good. So that's why we love cakes and cupcakes. Uh, do any of you know how to make a cake or make some cupcakes and what kind of ingredients go into the cake or the cupcakes? Well, I'm going to share that with you this morning. Uh, we have things in the cupcakes like butter. We're going to have some butter in the cupcakes or in the cake. We also have uh, baking powder and that makes the cakes rise. We have maybe some oil to go in the cake and a little bit of vanilla to flavor the cake. And of course we have to have some eggs to go in the cake. And then we have some sugar. And we have some flour to go in the cake. So all of those are the ingredients that go into baking a cake. And, uh, would you ever consider eating any of those things um, that make up a cake separately by themselves? Like maybe uh, some of this baking powder. How do you think that would taste? Or perhaps a spoonful of this vanilla. Ugh. Or maybe a cup of oil. Or a raw egg. We're not even supposed to eat raw eggs, are we? How would they taste? those ingredients separately, the baking powder and the vanilla and the oil and the flour and the raw egg. Probably not very good, would they? Now the sugar, we could probably handle that. We could probably eat that without it being in the cake and it would taste good and sweet. But did you know that life can be a lot like a cake? Well, separately in life, there are some things some that don't, don't uh, go very well, right? We have some bitter times some raw, hurtful times, and we have some bland times, 
And like, what are some of those things that you would think about that would be those kind of times? Well, how about losing a pet? That's always a very sad time. Or uh, someone that you love. Or maybe you fall off your bike and skin your knee. Or maybe you have a favorite friend at school and their family moves away. All of those are hurtful times and, and raw times and bitter times. But then we also have some good times in life, don't we? Like cake, birthday cake time, when we have our birthday and we celebrate our birthday and we get presents and cakes. That's always a great time, right? How about vacations? We love to go on vacation to Disney World and Dollywood and the beach. And we got one holiday coming up that I think most people truly love, and that's Christmas. Uh, we get to decorate and, and get presents, and most of all, we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So that's always a fun time. And also, it's fun and uh, something to look forward to just to go out maybe and have a nice meal, have our favorite meal, whether it's pizza or seafood. Well, some of the ingredients by the cake, of the cake by themselves don't taste very good, right? We decided that. The flour and the baking powder, we probably wouldn't want to eat those by themselves. But when we take all of those ingredients in the right amount, the, the flour and the sugar and the oil and the butter and the baking powder and the vanilla, and we beat it all up together and mix it all together and we bake it, what happens? That's right, we get a wonderful, yummy cake. And so that's what God does with our lives. He takes all those good times, like the vacations and the celebrations and the birthdays and the wonderful seasons we celebrate, like Christmas and Easter, and he mixes in those together with some of the bad times that we have um, that, that are, are not so good. And those bad times help us to grow. They help us to grow in our faith and to grow stronger and to learn to trust him. And he takes all those things and he mixes them all together. And he makes a life that is meaningful and that's uh, useful and that's very tasty. So not, not all things in life are good, are they? But we know that God has uh, his hand on us and he's in control and he's blessed us with all the good things and the bad things in our life. And uh, it's in the bad times that we actually grow and we see how big our God really is. And we learn that he is in control and that we can trust him. And his word even tells us that. It says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. So as we go through this time right now, that's really kind of a difficult time. It's a hurtful time. It's a stressful time. It's a time when we're having to do things uh, a little bit differently. Um, I hope that you will know that God is in control and that he's going to blend this all together with the good times that are coming up, like Thanksgiving and Christmas and all those times that we have that are in our life that are so wonderful. And he's going to make all those things work together for our good. So I hope you'll keep that in mind and that you'll trust him to do that. So let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you love us. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust you and we know that you are in control of all things. And that even when we go through bad times in our life, Lord, that you are watching over us. And those bad times help us to grow stronger and to grow in wisdom and to grow in our faith. And Lord, we just pray that you would help us that as we go through each day, Lord, that we might depend on you, we might trust you, and we might try to follow you in all that we do. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all take care. Let us join together as we prepare our hearts for worship with Sanctuary. Lord, prepare me be a sanctuary pure and holy bright and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for 
Amen. Good morning, Mount Olivet Church. I love you, and I'm so glad I'm here with you today. It's a wonderful day. Beautiful fall weather. It just It's just that time of year. Coolness in the air. I love it. So I hope everyone's doing well, being safe, and um, I'm sure I'll be hearing prayers and praises should um, you need any uh, prayers. We all need prayers, but if anything comes up, please let me know so we can lift you up on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Um, let me know if you need the link to that. And certainly, um, we'll pray for you and your family. The sermon today is Rooted in Love, Missed Opportunities. We just have so many opportunities throughout our day and our work and our encounters with individuals to share the love of Christ. Um, some of that uh, has to do with the way we talk to people, um, the manner that we respond to people. But um, as Ephesians uh, says, Ephesians 3, 17 and 18, I pray that you, being rooted in and established in love, may have power to grasp the love of Christ. Grasped the love of Christ, being rooted and established in love. And when I think of the words rooted, I, <clears throat> I think of one of my favorite hobbies. And um, some of us like to garden and I, I like to, to start new plants. It gives me great joy, whether it's seeing the spider plants have babies or whether I take a little piece of the violet plant, the African violet, and just take the leaf and stick it in some soil to see the new little babies come forward, um, or uh, taking a geranium and putting a little honey on it. That's another uh, trick that I've learned over the years, putting a little honey on the end of it and rooting it in some compost, and you'll have a new geranium plant. Uh, whatever the trick is, it always gives me great joy to to see new things um, bloom and new plants come. Um, also, I can think of seeds that some of the collecting the seed pods that we um, cherish and putting those in the soil and having that flower or that plant take root. It always gives me great joy. Um, it's it's just a lovely way of of thinking about God's love because Jesus loves us so much. He wants to be rooted in our hearts. He wants to to let us not only feel the presence of Him through the Holy Spirit in each of us, but He also wants us to share that love with others. Sometimes it's hard in our worlds today, our, our life. We're probably uh, in some ways divided in our beliefs and thoughts. Um, but Jesus doesn't want that division to be the end result. He wants his love to shine through despite that division. And in ancient times, we think about the church was the one place that everyone went, no matter what your religion or your race or your status, or your class. Everyone, master and slave, was brought into church to celebrate. So it's one way that we know today that as we worship together, that we can demonstrate and show love to each other. It's a powerful way to demonstrate that Christ is rooted in our hearts. Even the Emperor Constantine 
decided that Christianity should be the religion of the empire. And you know that the Roman Empire was full of barbarians and there was just um, lewd behavior going on. There was just, it was a terrible time. And the society was so decadent that Constantine, Constantine finally, in order to set the order of the body of the world straight and prevent the ongoing sickness, he called for Christianity to serve his people. Now, we can't save ourselves from sickness with bombs or armies or discourse that's disrespectful or any of those ways, but we can solve it all with the love of Christ. So no matter who you are, what race you are, what nationality you are, what your beliefs are, you can agree to disagree, but all with the love of Christ rooted in your heart. You know, there's a, um, it was a history a lesson that I recall in 1271, Kublai Khan had um, decided that he wanted his uh, empire to learn more about Christianity. He probably had done a little bit of research knowing the history of this smart man. And he sent for, he sent for his uh, warriors to, or am, emissaries to go to the Pope to request help and education. Um, he wanted to be baptized in the Christian faith. And he wanted his people, his tribes, to be baptized. Now, remember the history that uh, of that time. His empire was huge. Um, it spanned the areas from the Ural Mountains to the Himalayas. And also from the uh, China Sea to the Danube, a huge body, and likewise many individuals. But when they made their request known to the Pope, the desire of the people to learn about Christianity and even to become baptized we missed an opportunity. The Pope was busy and many years went by before he responded to that request. And it wasn't until 1289 that missionaries were sent into the area, but far too little and too late. Think what would have happened had the request of to bring Christ into that country and into that land and into those people, baptizing them in the name of Jesus Christ. Think about what would be different. The religions and the people of Turkey, India, even China. China would not be red. So that was a uh, what I would consider a huge historical missed opportunity to spread the love of Jesus Christ. Well, we know that um, that the love of Jesus Christ is more important now than ever. We know that Jesus died on the cross for us to not only save us because of our sins, but all we have to do is ask 
for Jesus to come into our lives, to ask for forgiveness. The love of Jesus Christ enters us. The grace surrounds us. It's free. I often wonder if we forget to call on the love of Jesus Christ periodically. And in Colossians, it would be helpful to read Colossians 1, 15 through 17. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So what missed opportunities do we have today that we could share if we were face to face? Where are, are there times in our lives where we might demonstrate the love of Christ, show the love of Christ, be the, the light of Christ in the world? We know that Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, puts that in our hearts. And sometimes we're better at it than others. During this pandemic time, we need to be re rooted in love. We need to have that um, excitement of Christ showing every day. We need to share, just like we would share a plant rooted in love with someone. We need to share the love of Christ with people any way we can. Maybe it'll be a phone call. Maybe it'll be a letter. Maybe it'll be face-to-face -face in church. Maybe it'll be by not cutting someone off or maybe letting them go first at a light. Whatever we have to do to demonstrate that love, I think that's that's... Not That will not be a missed opportunity. God wants us to share, share the joy of Jesus Christ. God wants us to share his love through words, through deeds, through actions, through even our nonverbal responses sometimes. Sometimes I have to remember to share the love of Christ through the tone of my voice, making sure that that's, that's uh, demonstrating love. Matthew West has, uh, has a song that's, the title is um, Beautiful Things We've Missed. And when I listen to that song, it, reminds me of just the the daily opportunities, um, the things that excite us, the things that, you know, that even in our past excited us, that still we should be um, feeling excitement and, and that love. When you think about the, the way your wife or your husband looks on his way to church, dressed up and nice and that glance where you know, wow, that that's something special. Or that nice dinner that was prepared for you in honor of your just being you. And, and you think, wow, that's why I, I love you so much. So 
what are the missed opportunities that we might be taking for granted? Is God and Jesus' love showing in every way possible? We certainly don't want any pandemic um, to interfere with our ability to, to show love. God is ever present in our world. And as scripture told us, he is in control. And all we have to do is remember his love is rooted in us. So as we go forward, let's try to be aware and cognizant of missed opportunities. Reflect on whether or not we've done everything, been as kind that we could. Because we need each other now more than ever. We need to, to shed life and love and share that love, no matter who we are as Christians. We need to agree to disagree on things, but that's okay. We need to keep an open mind. We need to learn every day, but always rooted in God's love as we engage in our relationships with other people. Remember, God is in us. Jesus' love will shine forward. We just don't want to miss an opportunity. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. This is the place where we play. This is the place where we cry. This is the place where we start. Till death do us part when we say goodbye. Here we leave all our pain. Find forgiveness and grace. Here we walk down the aisle. Dedicate every child here in the sacred place. This is the place where we pray. This is the place where we cry. This is the place where we start. Till that do us part when we say goodbye. Here we leave all our pain. Find forgiveness and grace. Here we walk down the aisle. That he paid every child here in the sacred place. Break some bread, come share the wine. At this table, there is a place. Bring your fears. Take his peace, come and share this holy space. 
is the place where we ride. This is the place where we start. Till death do us part when we say goodbye. Here we leave all our pain. Find forgiveness and grace. Here we walk down the aisle. Dedicate every child here in this sacred place. Thank you.